we've come for some baseline checks so we can track any changes that may take place over the next four weeks. Hi guys, yeah. Good hey, good to see you again. Dr. Gautam Mehta is an academic physician and scientist specialising in alcoholic liver disease. To help ensure we're starting from the same place, we've both spent the last four weeks completely teetotal. What I find interesting about the month off, I guess, is that I do, um, I feel physically good at any given minute, but actually I feel quite, in a way I feel quite miserable, like it's been quite a joyless month, bizarrely. Really? It's not been least quite because noticeable. When you socialise with people who are drunk, they are extremely boring if you're not <laughs> drunk as well. I think They're that's really awful. part of it. I think that is part of it, yeah. Right. OK, bit of oh, finger, thank you very much. Thank you very much, indeed, that's great. Great stuff. This morning, I think, when I got up, I thought, oh, it'll be quite, it'll be quite interesting and probably quite fun to get drunk tonight. And now I'm feeling much more sciency about it. Like, I think I'm going to look at my hangover very differently tomorrow. Mm. Mm. Also interested in us is Professor Rajiv Jalan and his team. Some surprising new research last year showed that the way you drink can really affect your immunity and inflammation levels. So they're going to be looking closely at our blood tests to see if there's any difference caused by our two drinking patterns. To find genetically identical twins agreeing to do a study such as, such as this is uh, really unique. Do you want I've been brave at the doctor sticker? Yeah. Oh, can I have a badge? <laughs> and a lollipop. <laughs> Having braved the blood tests, we're also going to assess the state of our livers after four weeks on the wagon. So, let's just recline the couch. So this is a, uh, this is a fibre scan. This thing sends out sound waves. It picks up the sound waves going through the liver and bouncing back to the probe to generate a number. There's a sign of how stiff or how soft okay. and pliable it is. And here, soft and pliable is actually very good. OK. This test is quite funny. I can feel this pulse going... You can literally feel it going right, right across your, your tummy, kind of wobbling your liver. Really? Yeah, yeah, I can feel it. So, so what are my numbers? So your median liver stiffness is 3.9 kilopascals. That means nothing. Which is very good, okay? okay? Which is fine. So it's, it's, it's like... Less, it's... Less, less than mine. <laughs> okay. Great stuff. I think it's worse to go second, because Chris did so well. Yeah, that's right, the pressure. <laughs> The pressure's mounted. It's really weird having this done because I am now thinking about all the drinks I've ever had. Yeah, so my bet is you will have a slightly firmer, huh. more fibrosed liver than me. Well, you have exactly the same number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's interesting how relieved I am by that, actually. <laughs> okay. So whatever we've been doing, we've got away with it. So far, <laughs> so, so far, so good. Oh, Which is the okay. perfect place to start. OK, so, that's great. And from here on, we see how things change. Obviously, we're a tiny sample of just two, which means this doesn't qualify as a scientific study. But as genetically identical twins, starting from the same liver stiffness, we can see if our test supports the new evidence that's out there. Science has progressed exponentially over the last 20 years since the guidelines were first written. There's lots more we know about the immune system, about alcohol and about the liver. 